Good morning, listeners. This is Jim, the Key, Keys bartender, coming to you from a beginning to be stormy morning here in the Florida Keys. Yes, it's beginning to be stormy. We had a beautiful morning. Now we have some clouds coming our way and some thunderstorms, as per usual for this time of year. You know, I talk about it being a slow time of the year, and it's really not slow for us particularly because most of the places, I want to discuss this about being in the tourist area, and our traditional traditions have changed due to COVID, right? Traditions have changed. We've had a, a different manner of doing things. And what happened here particularly, but probably in general, a lot of different places. The Florida Keys experience after the beginning of the pandemic, we've had an increase in tourism year round. Not that the busy season was busier, it just was longer. And right now, we're traditionally, as I talk about traditionally in the slower season, we are experiencing one of our busiest, at least from the microcosm of just my experience, how much business is coming into a restaurant post Labor Day. And part of that is a lot of businesses traditionally shut down after Labor Day. And what I don't really understand is the season, the traditional slow season starts around Labor Day and goes to right, it used to go right before Valentine's Day and then it pick up and then we'd be in season. And then we'd have a little boost around the holidays, you know, Thanksgiving maybe, and Christmas, Christmas week, the, right before Christmas and going through the new year. And there'd be a big boost. Now, the last couple of years, even pre-pandemic, there wasn't, it pretty much picked up after Christmas and stayed that way because people started realizing and get good deals. Now, especially in the short term, the last year and a half, we haven't really slowed down that much. But the other businesses are still acting as if it's a slow time of the year. Now, during the week, that may be the case. Because, but we're doing like work, we're doing business like gangbusters because it seems like I'd have to count all the restaurants, but we drove by the wife and I wanted to go to two different restaurants and both of them were closed at the same time. There's other ones that are closed too. So at least 50% are closed at the moment. 50%. And definitely almost uh, a lot. There's like three or four of the major restaurants that are, can serve you a dinner have closed in Key Largo. That's a lot considering that business didn't fall off that much. But it did fall off. But we are not, we're experiencing more traffic because there's a limited supply. Now, what I'm questioning is why is everyone shutting down? Because when everyone opens up in a little less than two weeks from today, what are they expecting? Yeah, we're going to, it's going to be a little slower because now we're in the height, we're coming off the height of the tropical storm season and they'll have to split up all the work and you know there is a duty when you're in a tourist town to service the tourist be available we need hotel rooms well obviously nowadays a lot of people aren't just doing the old school just driving down looking for an open hotel room they're doing online checkups to check and see what kind of deal they can get But when you show up, they're not checking for the restaurants and the venues and the dive boats and all that stuff. And they don't realize that. So I would suggest if you are a listener and you are involved in a business to maybe consider staggering when someone's closing. Taking an informal survey of who's closing and then maybe wait two weeks and you close and stagger it so everyone doesn't close at one time. 
I realize in places like Spain and Portugal and, and, and France, they take whole months. These businesses shut down regardless of what tourists are doing because that's their tradition to be doing it that way. And then you have the siesta where they shut down for a couple hours in the middle of the day. They've been doing that for years. We have been doing it for years, but not for hundreds of years. Not that long at all. So how hard would it be for us to pivot and do the right thing? And why not? Why not close down where, like when there's a small pool of tourists, why would everyone want to stay open at the same time? When there is a larger pool, why would everyone want to shut down? Well, for where I work, it's been a godsend. You know, normally we we didn't normally make a little less than we would, even with everyone shutting down. We would make a little less than normal season. But I'm going to be done with that. Because when you come to the Keys, you don't have to hear that. That's more for like local people. Yesterday, well, a couple of weeks ago, and I, I, which culminated in me getting this done yesterday, the wife said, you know, since you're getting older and all that stuff, maybe consider getting a B12 shot. People say, you know, you get one once a month, once every other week, whatever, something like that. It's a good idea. Since, especially since you like working out, you're trying to watch, you're feeling tired in the middle of the day. And they say, when well, nutritionists say, as you get older, you have a harder time absorbing B vitamins. So I thought about it. I asked around and I said, well, how could it hurt? As long as I just don't overdo it, right? Like I used to do with alcohol. There's this place in a little south of us in Tavernier. Um, and it was great. It was a great place. The lady was kind of like the doctor. Uh, I don't want to say their name, but she's kind of hippie, very talk. When I say hippie, H-I-P-P-I-E. Think of Woodstock, not hippie like big ass hips. Um, and she was very talkative, very friendly, gave us a rundown, tell them what we could do. You know, and obviously she was selling the strength of getting it every week or every other week. And I think she thought there's no way of overdoing it, maybe. You know, so I went and did it. I don't really know the full effects of it because. I don't really see, it's not like me, I'm running around with a ton of coffee in me, but I did have two cups of coffee this morning, so I really can't gauge it from the way I'm reacting now. So I went went and did that. It was interesting because I went there, it was closed. I went there on a Friday morning and it said the hours available this week were going to be Sunday 9 to 2 and Monday something like 8.30 to 2. Which is wonderful. I mean, she does acupuncture and, and facials and stuff like that. I know, it's one of those things. But, you know, a B12 shot is a B12 shot. So I got those. The wife and I got that. and We don't know. It hasn't hurt me yet. And I did sleep well last night, which was a, a godsend. A lot of times I wake up in the middle of the day, but the B12, she says, you're going to sleep great tonight. And I, why would a shot that gives you energy make you sleep well? Well, I got a lot of comp- accomplished yesterday. I wasn't necessarily climbing a wall, but yeah, I was a little angsty. A little angsty. And the reason why, and I know it's tire tire you out, it sounds kind of selfish, but part of it is I want to describe the whole thing, the saga, the AT&T. And I'm not going to call it the debacle. And I'm not going to blame AT&T. Because it just seems, I guess... From my experience dealing with large corporations, that they're not necessarily the greatest at responding to individual needs. They're really good at divi- responding to large groups of people, like like a government, like the U.S. government. They're thinking, what can we do for most of the people? Because obviously, every so often, there's going to be someone that falls through the cracks, and they're not going to be able to service that one citizen. And that one citizen may get the idea that the U.S. government is the worst thing in the world because of what particularly happened to me. 
And that could be the same thing when it comes to corporations and stuff like that. So for about 20 years, I've had a cell phone and I had it with the one company. Right? And I paid. Sometimes I overpaid. Sometimes I got a deal. But I stayed with them. And it was my, my part of it was the convenience. The other part of it, I think it was always convenience. And laziness is trying to change to another company. And I always heard, at least in the Keys, like a lot of different places in the country, there are certain services that have good coverage and certain have bad. So this recent thing I had with the large company AT&T, and I don't think I'm going to get in trouble for it because, well, who knows if I'm going to get in trouble for it. But had to do with the change over the network. Now, a lot of you may not be uh, aware of it, but they change over the technology, the carrier technology or transmission technology. I don't know the exact words for it, but the transmission technology went from 3G to 4G. I mean, obviously there was 2G and then and it was probably 1G at the beginning, but it was probably like World War One, where they didn't name it World War One originally when World War One happened. It was only in aftermath that goes that was a big war war and that was all, all over the fucking world well let's call it world war let's call it the the great war and oh we'll call it the great war because there couldn't any be another one bigger could it possibly be well little did they know about 30 years later there was going to be an even bigger one ww2 okay well let me get back to this the 3G technology, 4G technology, 5G. About seven months ago, I get a text message. And it said, your device is not uh, compatible with 5G or 4G. You have a 3G phone. And what I do, and they knew it, what I do is I buy my phones outside my network, make sure they're compatible with my network, and I take my SIM card and put it into my new phone. That's what I do and I used to do it. So this way, when it comes to AT&T doesn't have any contracts anymore, what they do is they offer you, they call it a free phone or a phone at no cost, but you're really paying for a phone. If you're getting a good phone, a lot of times you're paying for a new phone and it's included in your contract price. So they don't have a contract, but they have a contract price for the phone and it could be as little as $10 a month up until like $40 a month. And then you have insurance and all that stuff because it's an $1,100 phone. If your $1,100 phone breaks, what are you going to replace it with? And I'll get into what they consider is a replacement phone for free. For someone who's been with them for 20 years, it's been, I have no idea how much I, 20 years, you know, accumulate could be like $100,000 I paid in fees. I know, crazy, crazy. But, so six months ago, I get a text message from them. We're changing from 3G to 5G. We need, you need to upgrade your phone. So, immediately I started doing my research. I didn't want to purchase their phone because I don't want to have to pay, you know, be locked into that payment plan. And the payment plan is their contract. So, you have to pay $15, $16, $25 $25 a month for however long you get to upgrade again which is in itself kind of like a contract. That's how they get out of it. No more contracts. You just have to finish paying for your phone if you didn't pay up to the certain amount for the value of the phone or whatever they consider to be, then you cannot leave. They say there's a balance of $700 and you can't leave without paying that balance. So that locks you in. And I do not blame them for that. Why give someone something for nothing if they don't have any obligation to you? I understand that. And everyone does it. Verizon, T-Mobile, and all that stuff. They don't really give it away for nothing. You have to be responsible to them for a certain amount of time because otherwise if you keep on giving phones away, you're going to give more phones than you get in service fees from people and you'll just be bankrupt. So make a long story short, it's not a short story. I'm sorry, fucking sorry for it. I go and get a phone, a 5G phone. I switch my SIM card. And for about three months, everything's working great. I'm on 5G as they start switching. When I go to an area that there's a 5G, I start 
you know, they're all picking up. I don't have to worry about it. And I start getting text messages again. Hey, you got to upgrade your phone. So what I did, that was the first time I called them. And they called AT&T and I said, hey, listen, I bought my own 5G phone and I changed the SIM card. So I don't need any more messages on 5G already. And they go, okay, don't worry about it. Well, in the interim, up until like a couple, uh, let's say a month or two ago, I get three more messages and I call back three more times and say, listen, I keep on getting a message that you're going to be deactivating the service on my phone. And that's part of the message. And I said, don't worry about it. I have a 5G phone. You don't have to deactivate it. I'm on, uh, when I get into an area that has 5G, I get 5G. Okay? So I realize you're not going to be handling 3G, but my phone is fully capable. So I keep on getting, I keep on calling. After the third time, I get a little irate. So I, can't, I go to Poland. I use the phone over there. And I bought an international plan while I was over there. And I paid a shitload of money. It cost me two hundred more dollars to have service over there, but the girl, the girls were over for seven weeks, and I was there for two weeks, so that wasn't too bad, considering. Otherwise, I'd just buy a SIM card and pop that in. So here we go. I come back about two, three weeks after we come back from Poland in August. I get another text message. So that's the fourth. I call them up and say, don't worry about it. It says, soon you're going to be switching. They said, I, I tell them I, the same thing I told you over and over. I have a 5G phone. Don't worry about it. And they said, it's taken care of. One day, I get a box in the mail, and it's a phone from AT&T. Now I know they mean business. I open it up, and it's a phone I never even heard of. I think it's called a Maestro. And it's exactly what you think a free phone would be from AT&T. It's kind of like a budget Chinese brand, and it's a crappy Chinese brand. When you hear the ringtone, it sounds like one of the fake phones when they started coming out with kids' toys that look like cell phones. That's what the ringtone sounded like on that. And the screen was tiny, think about twice the size of an Apple Watch. And I'm thinking, why didn't they just send me a flip phone or a bag phone while they're at it? So I, I get it, and I said, oh, they're fucking serious about it. Now I call them again. I say, listen, I got a free phone from you, uh, and I'm not switching to it because the phone I bought it was much better, and it was much better than the free phone. I'm not going to switch, and I have a 5G phone. He said, don't worry. I said, let me send it back. And they said, don't worry about it. And it's so cheap, the phone. They didn't want, they didn't want to pay for the shipping. Because they probably can't even give them away. It's probably like those multicolored condoms you get at these uh, nightclubs. And people say, just take as many as you want. You know? They can put a bunch of these shitty cell phones in a bowl and say, you want this cell phone? Take it. Doesn't mean, you know. So what? Okay. That happens. I get another one uh, message after that that they're switching over. They're going to be turning off my phone soon after I made the phone call. So now it's the sixth phone call. I'm calling up and I get another text and they say, you're going to be turning off my phone and I need to activate my new phone. And I call up and I say, listen, I don't need to do it. I have a 5G phone. Can you just stop it? Please just stop sending the text messages because you're making me think that you're going to turn off my service. Well, last week they turned off my service and all I had was Wi-Fi. I couldn't get any data or anything like that. So they turned off my 5G phone and I called them up and they said, well, listen, we activated you, the SIM card on the phone we sent you. And I explained to them, I said, listen, I don't want your crappy phone. I have a 5G and did the same thing. And they said, yes. And I take, I'm trying to remember what happened. What happens, my cell phone comes back on, but I don't get any more cellular data. And that's the data you get when you're away so you can check your email do streaming when you're not in a wi-fi area now i need that for maps and doing my side businesses and stuff like that my side business notary so i can record things and 
things that need data, a data plan. And I pay for the data plan. So I call them up. Now this call, this is the kicker. I go and call them up and they t- I talk to someone. And you know, every time I'm speaking to them, this time I was angry. But I kept apologizing to the person that answered the phone. It obviously was someone from the subcontinent area. It sounded like they were from Southwest Asia, the person answering her phone. And they asked me the same questions. They told me that you need to be in a 5G piece of equipment. And I said I was. And I explained to them, I said, listen, do me a big favor. Go, you have my account in front of you. And they go, yes. Well, look at all the notes. And look at the notes for the last six months. Each one of them pertain to the thing that we're talking about right now. And I give that person, I said, could you read them? And I said, I can wait. And I waited five, six minutes and read it. Oh, it seems to me, Mr. Haran, that you have, you need a 5G phone. And I said, okay, after all reading that, I, th- I don't think they put in each of those notes that were there should say he claims to have a 5G phone. So we went into my phone and I gave him the model number and the whatever codes that you need to give and then confirm oh you do have a 5g phone and well oh thank you for confirming that oh we should be able to fix that and stuff like that we'll get you can go to the store or we'll send you one and i i was a little annoyed and i said i'm still not mad at you i understand that they did an automated she expl- explained to me that they, it was an automated switch over and that they they couldn't stop it. I said, well, they could have told me that the six or seven phone calls I made previously that they won't be able to stop the juggernaut of the changeover. Whatever it was. They had no control over it. I understand. You had no control. So I wish they had told me each time because it's accumulating the amount of time I spent on the phone with you. So... I asked to speak to customer loyalty and I asked for, I need some compensation for all the time. This is what I asked them. I said, I, I spoke to the customer loyalty person. I said, I need compensation for all these. I've been a long time customer. This has been a big headache. I'm not mad at you in particular. I'm not mad at the corporation in general. I understand that process is, you know, from what you hinted at, was be kind of uncomfortable. So the person I said, oh, we're going to email you a SIM card right away. Blah, blah, blah. I said, well, you're going to have to do a little better than that because this is really annoying and you know the prices have been cropping up so I want to get some deals. So I get in and talk to them and they, I give them all the information on the phone again and all that stuff about my, my type of my phone and then they said, we're going to overnight this to you. And I said, well, there's no overnighting to the keys. And they go, no, you're going to get it tomorrow. I said, well, yeah, I, know, I understand. Well, it turned out. It was Friday. I said, I'm not going to get it Saturday. I ended up getting it on Monday. And I had, they took care of me and they were very pleasant. Each person that I had dealt with, I realized it wasn't that they were inept, is that they were dealing inside a bureaucracy that was immovable. Immo- the things that were happening were things they couldn't stop and they couldn't change. They didn't fully understand that to change over from only accepting 5G phones now to getting rid of the 3G. They, they, they thought, for some reason, it was automatic, and they said there was no way to buy. You know, you, you're maybe there was no way to buy outside the network, even though they it didn't recognize the phone. They're start they're starting not to recognize phones that are outside phones that AT and T sells. Understand that, okay? But you didn't tell me then, and I want to get a SIM card. Today. So they sent me a SIM card. They took care of the deal. So t- yesterday. Shows up, I get a package. Now, they knew exactly the phone I had. They knew the model it had. I told them it was the same kind of SIM card they sent for the, I, I want to say shitty phone. Let's say the shitty phone they sent me, the same type of SIM card. Because we tried, you know, we tried using their SIM card. And their SIM card didn't work. It just worked for phone calls, didn't work for data. So... And they go, that's easy because it's assigned to the other, the shitty phone. They didn't say shitty phone. They just said the other phone. I said, okay, send me a new one and send it to address mine. And they send it and it's a big ass 
SIM card that they can't even, you know, clip to make smaller. I and mean, there's a way they used to be able to clip and make them into micro SIM cards or whatever size that you put in the slot inside the phone that identifies the phone inside the network. So they sent me the wrong SIM card. So I had to go, I go to the AT&T store twice yesterday. And originally I took, um, they gave me a new SIM card. I put it in and it still wouldn't get data. And they said, oh, there's something they still don't recognize your phone. I said, well, I wish they would. Wish they would. And then I was really frustrated and it was it was coming through when I was talking to the guys at the AT&T store. I was there twice. But each time I was talking to them, I said, listen, I realize you guys have nothing to do with this. I realize that. And my, I'm just really frustrated. I'm sorry that it's coming out this way. I apologize. And I was, I, I can't, do, I, I can't recreate the voice. I was going, I got this piece of shit phone. I don't want to, I did say piece of shit phone. I don't want to use it. I do apologize. I know you don't have anything to do with it. But now in order to resolve it, I'm willing to right now buy another phone. Just have it. I just want it to work. And they said, we can fix this. We can fix this. And they weren't. It wasn't able to be resolved on the first trip. As it turned out, there was another thing. And it did resolve. It did resolve in the end. And I am happy. But the whole experience made me realize that I have no control over my frustration levels and stuff like that. I am aware of it. I am self-aware that when I get angry, people that get angry at the checkout clerks because there's long lines. Or the price isn't right. At the checkout clerk at a department, I mean department store, at a grocery store. Or that there's a long wait for your food and your server comes out with your food. Your server didn't have anything to do with it. The checkout, the cashier did not have anything to do with the long lines. It's just, that's the way it is. And when people, when you're frustrated, you want to vent. And it's a shame you have to vent. You have to go like this. Ooh, you know, you have to go, listen, I need to vent a little. I realize it's not you. Now, I, you always want to place blame. And then that's your ego doing it. And that's mine. I wanted to blame AT&T. And then I realized it wasn't really AT&T because there was a program probably someone came up with a huge program that said, listen, in order to ha- not have to individually swap accounts, from 3G to 5G or accept phones to it, we're going to get this automated system that sends out these messages that tell them you got to switch over and then you got to record them, put it in your program, and this way you know they're ready, good to go. What happened is they didn't cover all contingencies, this program or the protocols or something like that. It's a bureaucracy when you're in a corporation. It's a bureaucracy. Bureaucracies are the way it is. That's why how long, large organizations function. There's not, there's no mom and pop cell companies, cellular companies. There are no mom and pops. They're big companies, big corporations, right? And so, my individual problem was unique. Though it wasn't unique that there wasn't a lot of problems with the switchover and a lot of people were dealing with it. And I was going to go, okay, I realize this isn't you. This isn't even AT&T. This is the implementation of a big change that you didn't foresee all the things that could go wrong. And every time I addressed it, there was not a workaround or a fix. Now, today, my phone's working. Now, I, in my head yesterday, I was thinking, I have no cellular data. If I have to go someplace, I heavily dependent, I'm heavily dependent on the navigation app on my phone. I'm heavily dependent on it. I can't get, I mean, if I haven't been to a place, I'm not going to find it. So I'm thinking about that. And I also use different apps for when I'm doing my notary signing. And I go, holy shit. 
How am I going to do it? I've got to get a phone. I've got to get ready. I was at the time I was having problems yesterday. I wasn't receiving any phone calls. So anybody trying to, there was one person that I was actually going to deal with on these. There was another signing and I, I don't think that came through. So I kind of lost a little money. Could have been on like, it's only a hundred dollars, whatever. But I, I think, oh my God, this problem is going to start to affect me financially. And if I don't get it done done tomorrow, I'm going to have to do do some other workaround. Because when I did put that SIM card, at one point yesterday, I put the SIM card in the phone, phone they gave me. Oh, my God. I was looking at it and said, is this even a real phone? I mean, it did make a phone call. It sounded like I was talking to a, a, a soup can. But... I mean, it would have worked a little for me. It would have worked a little for me, but I know in the long run I was going to have problems. I, I was going to go, oh my God, this isn't going to last. I was ready to crush it. And the frustration was manifesting itself. You could, you could tell no matter what I believed in, that it's not, I, I was intellectually aware that it wasn't anybody's particular problem to get me. And that it was a problem of just chance of impl- implementing a program that had nothing to do with me personally, but I was, my frustration le- level was palpable and I could not over you. But I think the awareness of it helps me address it and at least I can be a self-aware asshole when I'm acting like an asshole. And you get all selfish when something's not going your way. And that seems to be my reaction a lot of times. I take it personally when there's traffic. Or when, you know, when your partner doesn't do, you know, if Abby doesn't do what I want or Sky doesn't agree with what, what my goals are, you know, what I have to do. Because I know the full story in my head. They know part of the story and they know their story, the things they need to get done. And sometimes it has a lot to do with nothing. It doesn't really mean anything. Me getting frustrated and angry. But you just got to take care of it. You just have to fucking take care of it. And that's what I did. I, I, I'm not clapping myself on the back. I was actually kind of disappointed with the way I behave. But then that's the part of being self-aware. I'm empathetic when I'm looking at the people. When I'm telling them, I go, listen, I realize you don't have anything to do with it. And I realize you helping me does not pay your bills. And I appreciate you doing it. But... And, and I thank you. So I did tell the two guys that were helping me. I said, listen, you work in the area. Come into my restaurant that I work at and I will buy you dinner. Okay? I appreciate it. So I'm going to move on from there. And you know what? I am over it. It's fixed for now. And I'm not suggesting that I'm doom foreshadowing anything with the big corporations. And and I don't have a problem with the big corporations because they serve their purpose. You need big corporations to do certain things. Like, you can't use a mom and pop thing to build your highways, can you? You need a big corporation to build your highway or a big public service company. Talking about dealing with things, on a third level, the frustrations I have with technology when I cannot, when you're, I'm Dealing with a technology I'm not familiar with. I am almost an expert with the podcasting thing. I know how to do the live podcast. I know how to do the... Um, I, a lot of stuff on my cell phone. Oh, gosh. I'm good with the laptop. I got somewhat proficient see Word, PowerPoint... Used to be Excel, Access. But when I go into my part time job, they have a computer network that it seems like when IT people have a different idea, we call user being user friendly. They will build icons and will have a lot of things. So when I go into my desktop, and I'm talking my virtual desktop when I'm on my network in, in there. I'm not going to describe what's on there. 
but I have to look for certain certifications that I have to get and test. And it's not always apparent where it is. It's not always apparent where my dashboard is. And you say, listen, this is your personal dashboard. This is where all your stuff is. It's not, when you go up into it, you, you don't see it. You see pictures, you see icons, and we say personal dashboard or something like that. You would go here. This is all the stuff you need. The other stuff is for accomplishing your goals if you work there all the time, like Word and this and Internet and Xnet and all that stuff. I need to just get into this one thing every time I go in there. And I rarely go into it, so a lot of times my password expires. So I have to call up the technology department and say, what is this guy always calling up? He calls four times a year because I have to be in there four times a year. And that's when my password expires. I have to change it again. Because otherwise I won't go in there. Because you know what? There's 50 emails come every day. And they're all from IT. There's a couple personal ones for that. and It's just so many of them. And when you get so many emails, stuff like this, why even check? So, and it's a double, you have to do a double authentication and stuff like that. So it's always a process for me, a couple days process to get anything done that's simple. Once I get to the area, I have to get it done, I go and do it. And some of it takes a couple hours, some of it only takes a half hour. And it gets kind of frustrating. I always had that problem technology say you know we should be able to do that why doesn't it do it like i don't really understand why you can't just edit an audio file by clipping it easily it just seems like there's always a difficulty you say listen you're selecting you're the selecting what you're going to be taking out or you're selecting what you're going to enhance i said we should always be you're snipping what you're taking out. And then you go to something else. You know, I just didn't, they, they don't make the common sense thing a logical person would do as if they were going to do something by hand. You know, it's kind of like, it's inelegant, inelegant, I N E L. E G A N T and whatever it doesn't make sense, so you don't do it, and it doesn't make any sense. You do it. so. You said this isn't logical the way you do this process. Process doesn't seem logical to me, and that's where you don't make the connection there, right? When you're trying to figure something out, well, of course it's this way. It's totally illogical. I don't know why it's this way, but everyone that does it knows this. And I said, well, if it was logical, then it would be right there, right? Just like when I, you know, was dealing with AT and T, and there were a lot of people, the service people there thought, oh, the logical thing would be that your phone isn't a five G phone. And blah, blah 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 blah. It's not. It's not that. It's not the problem. It's, and it's always that. And, <clears throat> and the frustration levels are. It's just like things you can't control, like the weather. When you're ready to go, oh, I was going to go out. I was going to go on a picnic today. Now it's raining. You can't control that. You're going to get angry at the weather. But that were your plans and your plans have changed. Now you're going to have to do something else or decide to go out in the rain or go someplace that's lightning safe so you don't get struck by lightning. That's easy answer. And I'm just trying to, it would be nice if I can get beyond these feelings when something happens. It doesn't have to manifest itself. Can it be like fucking Spock? This is logical. Why are you getting angry at the machine? The machine had nothing to do with it. It was the instructions. A machine is... is I'm always, I don't want to say stupid. A machine only does exactly what you tell it to do. And that's logic right there. It tells you that's why I never understood programming and stuff like that. And if I could just remember that, if I could just... If I could tell it how to do, I knew the semantics, how to write it, I could I could do the program. <clears throat> no problem. Because I know what I need to do. I just need the semantics for it. Like when you're building an Excel spreadsheet, you want to do a function in this box. So you put a function behind the box. Or when you put a number into this box, it plugs it into this place in the function. 
I'm not trying to lose you. On to lighter things. So the wife and I, and finally this to finish up with a restaurant thing, sometimes, and it only applies right now to burgers, sometimes fish sandwiches or, or things like that. When you're having a traditional meal, let's say a cheeseburger or a fish sandwich, and it's just a fish sandwich, it's not the Key Largo fish sandwich, or it's not the some some cheeseburger. You know, just cheeseburger, fish sandwich. When you say cheeseburger or fish sandwich, when you get that, when you get that order, no matter where you order, why are there any con- condiments on it? You get a Big Mac, you got to get the special sauce because, of, you know, two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a, lettuce, and a sesame seed bun, right? Quarter pounder at McDonald's, onions, ketchup, m- mustard. I'm not sure, maybe. But you could, okay, that's theirs. The quarter pounder, that may be say, hey, it's trademarked. It's not, the, I just want this and that. Cheeseburger. Now, I do not agree with the condiment because you have those little packs. Do not put ketchup, mustard, or mayonnaise, or assume that I want any of that on my burger. I do like ketchup on my burgers. I do. I don't want you to put it on. That's mine. It's just like, I don't mind getting a blowjob. But I don't want just anybody giving me a blowjob. Right? I don't want you putting your mayonnaise on my burger. I don't know how much mayonnaise you put on it. I don't like mayonnaise that much on my burger. I like it on my ham sandwich. I could put it on my Italian hoagie. I call it hoagie. I don't call it sub because that's where I'm from. People from other places in the United States. In New York, you either call it a sub or a hero, whatever it's called. I don't know how much of a hero you are just because you're making a big fucking sandwich. We call it a hoagie because it was from Hog Island. And Hog Island was in the middle of the Delaware River. And supposedly that's where the name caught on. So they call it a hoggie or a hoagie. And a story. But that's a brand name. So if you get that, you're going to get certain. So if you order something like a cheeseburger or a fish sandwich, the condiment and say, I want it with cheese. A cheeseburger with cheese. I want it with Swiss. Don't put any mayo on it. Why do you choose, why do you make the, why do you have the goal to assume the condiment I want? Well, we do. That's we put mayonnaise on our burgers. Well, don't put it on the burgers. Give them the mayonnaise. If you say, hey, listen, we think everyone should go with mayonnaise. Here's mayonnaise. Well, I don't like fucking mayonnaise. Right? And some people put a shitload over, you know, over condiment it. It's like salt. You want salt with that? And you dump a quarter pound of salt. Or a little salt. It's a personal choice. Condiment seasoning and stuff like that. Obviously, there's a certain amount of seasoning you have to do for something like if you're ordering chicken piccata. But when there's a final touch on it, the condiments, you don't have to do any of that. That's why they call the setup the lettuce, tomato, and onion on the side of a burger. Do you want that? You know, no, no lettuce, tomato, and onion. I don't want any of it. Some people can't have the pickle on their plate. Just freak out. They said, oh, the pickle juice, the pickle juice has contaminated my fucking burger. It's the worst thing in the world that you have a little pickle juice. Pickle juice also has a little connotations of other things too, right? But I am calling out places. Do not, do not. Are you fucking kidding me? You got a lot of fucking nerve putting mayonnaise on my burger. It's like saying, you got a lot of nerve yelling at my kid. It's not your place to put mayo on my burger. That being said, if they put mayo on my burger, I'm not going to flip out on the people because I realize, oh, you're one of those places. I shouldn't, I'm not going to yell at the thing because they do it to everyone. Now, if I'm the only burger that has mayo on it and it's the same order for everyone, I'm going to like, what the fuck? 
You know, mistakes are made sometimes, but and only a certain amount of things I'm going to let slide. And condiments, I'm going to stand my ground for that. That's going to be on the side. I'd like to thank you for listening. This is a regular episode. So if you like the episode, please share it with your friends, family, strangers. And if you want to contact me, contact me at jimmykeysbartender.com. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. That's Keys Bartender on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. You can message me through those apps too. It could take a little longer because I don't always check them every day. I'm not that conceited. I'm not that busy yet either. And I'd like to thank you for listening. And I'll be back again tomorrow. I got a double, so I'll probably be back on Thursday. I will talk to you later. I hope you have a good week. Bye.